Hi, everybody. I'm here with Dan Bardsley, and we're going to be talking about recruiter enablement. So, Dan, thanks for taking the time to join me and give us a quick introduction to you and, and your background and like what you do today. Okay, sure. So, I'm Dan. I've been in the recruitment industry now for around 10 years. Um, initially, kind of classic route, really. Um, agency recruitment. I then set up as a freelancer to focus on uh, in-house roles. Um, I did that for a few years and I didn't really realize it at the time, but most of those roles I was really doing recruitment marketing. It was just the way I approached things. So then from there, I started to focus on recruitment marketing uh, consultancy roles. Um, and again, in the last two years, I kind of accidentally became a recruitment marketing agency. So as well as the strategy, it would be more focused on helping deliver the creative for companies as well. So videography, copyright and design, running paid targeted ads for companies as well. And then all that's led me to last month when I started a slightly new venture, um, the Silent uh, Recruiter, where I just focus now purely on job specific content. So no shiny career pages or fancy EVPs, that's me. I just like real job specific stuff that gives candidates like deep insight into roles because I thought there was a need for that in the industry. Right. How does that work? Just like we'll come on to recruiter enablement in a minute, but like how does that work? If I'm I'm if I'm a typical customer, like who am I? What what who do I work for and what's my job title and what's my need? Yeah, so I will work with talent acquisition teams. And to be honest, you you help me um understand recruiter enablement. I, I only really realized it a couple of months ago when I started hearing you talk about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. So I'll go into a talent acquisition team and essentially provide an additional layer of support. And I'm there to make sure that recruiters have a quick, snappy, engaging collateral to go out and attract, engage and convert talent. Again, I, I feel that recruitment marketing, it's often a little slow bit of a, a blanket strategy can be a little bit dull at times as well so i focus on just job specific stuff that enables recruiters to go out and and effectively communicate what a, a role entails absolutely love that um bill boorman has many many times talked about the concept of the job brand so the job brand being as important as the employer brand, what is it going to do for me, not just working in that company, but working with that specific hiring manager and working in that particular team and developing the skills that I'll develop in that job? And how is that going to make me more marketable in the future? What's that going to do for me? And he's talked about it a lot. And um, I've never come across anybody who is dedicated you know, beyond job advert kind of writing, I've not never come across anybody who is who is dedicated to doing that type of thing. So very interesting. Um, if I'm a recruiter, you are enabling me with which types of which types of assets and for what specific phases of the recruitment process. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, firstly. Um, we focus on the attraction side of things and a kind of let's call it a default strategy was you're hiring for a software engineer yeah. I'm going to put together um, a landing page for you which will essentially have all the information that a candidate would would need that would be a video Q&A with a hiring manager which you'd condense down on this landing page to the the good stuff the, the little snippet it'd be a well-written, you know, concise um, job advert. Um, we, we see lots of job descriptions, which are important with, with bullet points, but we would just kind of condense that down and pick out the important stuff that, like you say, how is this going to make my life better if I work in this role? Um, and then the beauty of these landing pages as well is in putting together all the creative assets to create it, we can then use it and chop them up into to smaller bite-sized assets which we'd roll out during the like engagement phase and I'm still really I am in the kind of figuring it out stage at the moment but I feel like 
I'm going to start moving more into the candidate experience side of things because we can be quite thoughtful now with the tech around on what assets we have and, and what stage we, we give it to candidates. And it's just, I think the word give is important there. Instead of just a boring generic email and thanks for your application, we could just say something as simple as a little 15 second loom video with a hiring manager saying, thanks so much, really appreciate your application. This is what you can expect at the next stage. So it's not, um, we're not reinventing the wheel here, but there's not many companies doing things this way from what I've observed. Oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I, um, I was asked to give some commentary to Chronify, um, which is a um, scheduling technology uh, provider um, for their annual candidate expectations report uh, recently. And um, it was produced yesterday. And honestly, the expectation of candidates is not closely being matched by what typical you know, recruitment teams are, are actually delivering. And one of the big ones is just like, what's the process? What should I expect next? And so what you've just said about that Loom video for the hiring manager just saying, yeah, thanks for applying. Here's what you can expect next. I mean, that takes the hiring manager maybe five minutes with you to kind of do that. And that's yeah. going to keep people engaged so that when they are contacted in the next phase, they remain engaged and they know what to expect. And it's all, it, the, the, if you know what to expect, that means that when it happens, that's familiarity, that creates trust, and that creates goodwill, I think, from the candidate as well. So you could be moving further into the funnel, into things like the candidate has been rejected before the assessment, what do they get? After the assessment, what do they get? After the first interview, what do they get? And it's potentially a slightly yeah. different messaging for each stage of rejection and each stage that they move through the funnel and to the next stage. Yeah, right. sure. And again, at the moment, I'm, I'm kind of stumbling into different things, but it, the ripple effect here of the quality of interviews that hiring managers are having with candidates is much better. Candidates are often just coming a lot more prepared. They can just ask better quality questions. Um, the putting together of the content as well between a recruiter and a hiring manager, that just creates more accountability from hiring managers. I think it also creates alignment between the hiring manager and the recruiter a lot quicker. We've all been there, right, where it's job goes live, you take a brief and you know that in six weeks' time, which we shouldn't do as recruiters, but it's, are oh, we back to the drawing board? I'm going to tweak the spec. There's always no need for that because you're defining things a lot clearly from, from the beginning. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think there's a big need for what you're offering. Um, I mean, some people might think it's a little bit niche, but it's actually the specialism that you're building up by studying this, providing services to companies that are, are, are needing this. Um, is it my, my sort of last question is, is this for like, I mean, there's a big difference in the there's a big difference in the importance of getting certain high roles filled and other versus others. And often a talent acquisition team would refer to the concept of critical hires and critical hires might be, it might be the once a year hire, but it's such a vital position, or it might be like the bread and butter hire. We are constantly hiring salespeople or engineers or you know, whatever it might be. Um, what, what are the sort of trends that, that you've seen in terms of where people would want to commission your services? So I'd say they're definitely leaning into the, the critical hires. And again, I'm, I'm only two weeks in, into this at the moment. And the way I would work with a business is I'd essentially embed into their TA function on like a monthly a retainer. And the way we'd yeah. work is we'd sit down at the start of the month, we'd figure out their priorities, any challenges they'd have, um some challenges that could be solved through recruitment marketing which they may not have even thought about and we'll stack those projects up we'll just use a management tool with trello um and we'll work on one at a time so yeah. priorities change quickly right if they're suddenly like oh we're hiring this sales engineer it's critical that'll just be quite transactional here but we'll just slide that to my to-do pile and that's what i will work on and, and focus on but i think the, the cool thing is to turn this around 
take me typically two to three days per project. Yeah. And the recruiter has that. It, it, it's quick. Mo- yeah. The recruitment moves quickly, but I just feel like recruitment marketing moves too slowly to, yeah. to read and, and it's not aligned. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. And the other the other beautiful thing about this is when uh, you've done this, I mean, a, a job, yes, jobs are dynamic and companies are dynamic and there will be an ongoing need to work on new types of hires that companies are doing because the world's changing really fast right now. So there's lots of new types of recruiting that companies are doing they've never done before. But a lot of what you're building, it can be done once and then needs to be refreshed 12 months later. It can be get lots and lots of life, lifespan out yeah. of you know the one thing that you've done. Um, and again, Dan, early, early days at the moment, but I feel that um, at first, this will be a done for you solution. So I'll go in and give them the asset. I then see after two, three months, it will be a, a done with you solution. So it's, I'm almost helping recruiters think a little bit differently, but how to put the collateral together, even just being more creative with the questions that you ask hiring managers in, in time, being able to deliver some data on the most effective questions, um, how to structure landing pages, which are the most effective. Um, so that's how I see things going. Yeah, and do you know something? As you as you build up your own um, experience and use cases, uh, you're going to be able to build your own uh, methodology and library, and it's going to be easier for you to deliver for every customer as well. Because you every every time you learn, actually phrasing it that way is not as good as phrasing it this way. You can make a you can make a change to your own template, and you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. And so there is real credibility in in that like methodology and templates, which um, is go, is going to be like it's brimming with intellectual um, in, intellectual capital. So it's yeah. uh, going to be very exciting to watch what what you do. So Dan, thanks for joining me today. Um, it's been great to find out about that, and uh, all the very best. Thanks, Alan. Cheers.